We've been spending part of this morning looking at the politics of health care. Protections for people with pre-existing conditions have been a big issue in this year, with candidates on both sides trying to convince voters they will protect them. In the Republican gubernatorial race, Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Clayfish, a colon cancer survivor, did a TV ad promising to cover people with pre-existing conditions, even as Wisconsin has sued to overturn the Affordable Care Act. We are talking about this and more today with the Lieutenant Governor, Rebecca Clayfish. It's good to have you back on the program. Thanks so much for having me. And I want to begin with this, this talk about whether pre-existing conditions would be covered in Wisconsin. And I want to quote from the, the ad that you did on this subject. You said, today, people with pre-existing conditions in Wisconsin are already covered. And as long as Scott and I are in office, they always will be. So my question is this. If the state is successful in suing, if Obamacare ends, how will people with pre-existing conditions in Wisconsin be protected? By state law. One of the misconceptions we have, I think, in this election cycle is that you need federal law to protect people with pre-existing conditions. People like me, you already said that I'm a colon cancer survivor. You don't need federal law. You can do that with state law like ours, the one that the governor already proposed back in January and was already passed by the assembly. Basically, it says if you're a health insurance company and you want to do business here in the state of Wisconsin, you have to cover people with pre-existing conditions and you're not allowed to charge us more. Okay. The Senate hasn't passed it yet. Not yet. So it's not law yet. Not yet. Correct. The assembly bill, would insurance companies have to cover uh, prescription drugs, for instance? I would have to look at the bill language that is going to be passed. The governor will call an extraordinary session. He already said that. And I can't guarantee that what the Senate will pass and the Assembly will pass when he calls the extra session is going to be identical. But those two components, the fact that they have to cover people like me with pre-existing conditions and they're not allowed to charge us more, those are the main components. Yeah, you were on uh, Twitter this past week. I noticed you did about 13 tweets in an hour, which were very critical of Mandela Barnes, a Democratic lieutenant governor's candidate, and Tony Evers, the Democratic gubernatorial candidate. What, what prompted that? I feel like there has been silence on the other end in talking about their potential for leadership and taking the state forward. There's been none of it. In fact, all we hear are retreads of the same old failed policies, and then I really don't see anyone challenging them on that. So I decided to. Yeah, and, and you were specific. You talked about things such as uh, wanting to raise the gas tax a dollar. Tony Evers says that's ridiculous. That's not going to happen. Tony Evers has said that everything's on the table. And so if a dollar is not on the table, what does that mean for someone like me? A bucko one, 99 cents? He says he's not going to be specific until after the inauguration. That's basically like Nancy Pelosi's, well, you can read it after it's been passed. I just think that that's really dangerous, that we're supposed to elect someone and then we'll find out his policy views later. And then at the same time, here's a guy who plagiarizes in his own state Department of Public Instruction budget and said, well, just ignore the plagiarism part. It's about the vision. You can't have both at once. And I suppose that's why the Twitter storm, because I don't see anybody confronting these guys on this stuff. When I see that Mandela Barnes was the host of this crazy lingerie party years ago, I think, well, why is nobody talking to him about how that's kind of demeaning to women and how are women like me raising two girls supposed to talk about the state of politics in America today when someone like that is running against their mom? Yeah, I, I want to ask you about that. That's, that's an interesting point. When, when Mandela Barnes was on the show, I asked him about a couple of controversial comments he made, things you actually tweeted about, um, some of the things he said about Trump voters and, and about uh, other matters. So, so I have to ask you, uh, return the favor here and ask you a question about the, the kneeling issue that came up earlier. You said that uh, Mandela Barnes had kneeled during the national anthem at State Fair Park during the opening, but then you later said that was not the case. Well, how did that happen? I, w I said that I was told that. And that is true. I was told that, but I didn't have video evidence. I didn't have photographic evidence. And as a good journalist, I should never have repeated something without having photographic or video evidence. But the purpose behind my injecting that into the debate was the fact that we were having the debate. And I think it's an important debate for us to have as Americans because the national the anthem during the national anthem. National anthem is something that should be 
special. It should be important to us. It should be a moment of unity for all Americans. The American flag and the national anthem that plays while it's waving before a game or a ceremony should represent the greatest hopes and aspirations for this country. It should be something that's unifying. Do you think, though, that when you talk about the national anthem being unifying, do you think when you uh, suggest that the lieutenant governor, who also happens to be African-American, was kneeling when he was not kneeling, does that help unify us as a state? I think the debate is important. I think we need to have it. And I think we need to talk as a country, not just as a state, about how we can unify, how we can be aspirational, and how politics can become more civil. All right. Republican Lieutenant Governor Rebecca Clayfish running for re-election. Good to have you back on the program. Thanks for having Appreciate me. It. Coming up next, when President's campaign for other candidates, does it always help?